So we're kind of in a funny spot. So when I took this reference photo, um, my son was, I want to say somewhere around seven months, almost eight months. And uh, now he's about a year old, um, just had his uh, first birthday. And in that time, we've gone from having um, barely any hair to a full head of curly locks, pretty much. So I've always kind of known that, <laughs> The hair as it was in this photo um, was not going to be the way the hair was going to look. So that's why I haven't just, I just haven't dealt with it at all. And I was just going to kind of wait and see, um, you know, by the time I actually get to it, where, where his hair is going to be. Because it looked like even then that, that, that um, something else was going to happen, right? We weren't going to just stay, uh, you know, middle-aged, um, kind of uh, balding gentleman look. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, I'm going to uh, do kind of a fast beach technique version on the hair and uh, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to go in and paint his hair in with some nice Venetian red and just oil. Right. I've already done oil. Um, I'm not... Uh, but yeah, we're we're in the oil oil game, so no need. Um, but I'm just gonna go in, and I have a reference photo where his head is pretty close to the angle I am working with now. So I'm just kind of getting a feel for what is happening with his hair, um, and I am going to just paint in his little curls. So he's got quite a bit more hair now <laughs> than he did in this initial photo. <laughs> and, and, you know, as I said, I, I always kind of knew that we, were, we weren't going to leave the hair like this. But um, since it kept changing over the months that I was working on this, I, uh, I didn't want to put it in until, until this stage. Um. So here we go. I'm just very loosely putting it in. And here, this is where the main difference is going to be, is that there is uh, some stuff happening up above his head. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do here is, I'm using the red that's the same as the ground as when we started, right? So... What I'm going to do, and you'll see, is I'll kind of direct paint um, some of uh, the uh, shadows back in here. It looks very funny right now, doesn't it? <laughs> and... Um, you know, I, I painted all of this forehead in there with the knowledge that I wasn't going to need quite a bit of it. But, you know, you never know. And let's see. This goes this way. This goes that way. This kind of keeps going. This lock goes like this. And this goes like here-ish. Okay. I'm just going to kind of fill in a little bit on that, on the scalp. Okay. And soften some of this stuff up. You know, I mean, they call it baby hair for a reason, right? It's soft and 
it's got a thing to it that adult hair definitely doesn't. So you don't want to ever make, if you're painting kids, you don't want to ever make the mistake of putting adult hair on a child. It looks weird. Like it just is not correct. And, and you might not, um, even their hairline isn't in the same place, right? Like he's still, and I'm okay with that. Like he's still growing a lot of these little fine baby hairs in. And that's kind of a fun little extra detail. So I'm actually gonna paint probably some of those in, but I'm not gonna do that um, in this stage. I'm gonna do that kind of later on. So there we go. We've got some um, hair in there. <laughs> and because it's so red, it looks hilarious. <laughs> okay. So I'm now gonna go in with um, a bit more shadow so I've got some sepia ready to go and I got just looking at my reference I am not painting this is not directly painting let me just be clear I'm not directly painting in his hair I'm doing a um under painting of his hair that I will then glaze the correct colors onto so I am um Direct painting and underpainting, if that makes sense. This and this goes up like this. This goes here. This goes like this. And there's painting messy curly hair is quite a quite a feat. Yeah, hi. Look who woke up. Look, look who woke up. Hi, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Baba. So, and because it's baby hair, like, <laughs> let's be real, he's, he's, if he's a cherub and he's flying around, his hair isn't going to be uh, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be windswept, <laughs> right? So I'm going to paint his hair uh, as I see it in the reference, because I think it's a great, I found a, a good photo. Um, you know, I think if I've bothered to do references on absolutely everything else in this painting, I am not going to, um, I'm not going to just suddenly be like, oh, I can just make up the hair. <laughs> you know, I need to um, still maintain accuracy <laughs> with what I'm doing. I don't want to just make stuff up because you can tell. You can tell when, when you've used references and when you haven't, I think. No one's that good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I just have a very basic kind of, you can see what's going on here. Again, this is an underpainting. This isn't how it's going to really look. Um, we're going to still glaze over this, but I'm also going to go in with some white. Yes. In just a second here. Ow. <laughs> And then I'm probably going to go in with a bit of my egg tempera as well. Um, just to get a bit of that highlight um, harmonized with how I've done the rest of the painting. But this is a real speedy version. If you need to catch up something like this. So I'm going to just do some highlights here. There. There. And this is why it's good to know more than one way of painting because it's good to know how to direct paint. It's good to know how to do miche. It's good to know how to do all of these things because invariably, like, they're all extremely useful. And so there's also... Um, I'm going to leave um, some of those. I always love painting little single hairs. Hair is super fun to paint. 
Uh, and I'm going to leave painting those single hairs until um, I'm either painting in with my egg tempera or when I'm doing the final kind of highlight and shadow and I literally just direct paint some of that stuff on there. Okay, and that goes this way, this way. There. There, okay. So that's a real general kind of <coughs> going on here and it captures his uh, hilarious little curls pretty well <laughs> yeah hi baby yeah yeah mm -hmm. So now I'm going to go in with my, um, my casing. That's what I'm using for all of this. I normally love to make my own egg tempera, but just haven't been able to negotiate a time where I can work with um, titanium white powder <laughs> so we are just using casing at the moment i'm just so going I'm... to go in here and highlight some of the hair so kind of um catching up this part of the painting with where the rest of it is. So I'm just kind of with my Scene. Going into those shapes, making them a bit more refined, looking at my reference. And just trying to get the feel for the hair in with my casing. So this method, what I'm going to do here, is a great way if you've made a mistake that you've realized or if you kind of get to this place in the painting and you're like, oh my god, I absolutely need to add in a spaceship. I don't know, you know, like, I <laughs> just, and so it's not like you have to start from scratch. But um, you can still kind of mimic some of the depth that the rest of the painting has by just doing like the super fast version as an additive uh, rather, you know, than feeling like, you know, well, I didn't have it in from the beginning, therefore it's not going in. You know, 
So I, you know, things always change with paintings. That's just how they are, right? So it's important to be able to be flexible. And I like doing it this way because I still then have my flexibility um, to add things when, as I need them. If I need them. But uh, mainly I'm not all, I'm also not losing depth uh, that I need to make the painting fit in, make this part of the painting fit in with the rest of it. And here for the sake of time, I've just sped things up. So you're just seeing the remainder of the casing going on as I'm doing the highlights. So just like I would for the underpainting, I'm just accenting, kind of bringing out certain parts of the hair uh, more than others where the light's going to be. And then I go over it with my blue glaze. So once I've done that, you can see that this now looks like it's just part of the underpainting. And, you know, I will be able to, once this is dry, really just kind of go back in and bring out some of the highlights. And details that I need. Just kind of doing this as an example right now, but you get the point. So there we go. That's what adding in the hair looks like. And I'm gonna, once this is dry, go back in and do the whole thing like that, really bring out where the light is coming from. And um, I will be ready then uh, to glaze my logo color on once that is good and dry. Uh, like, subscribe, and share with somebody that you think would like it. And thank you for joining me for the hair. Bye.